There is nothing wrong with your television set. We are in control. We control the horizontal. Horizontal. That is horizontal. That's a diagonal. Oh, okay. Turn it. Yeah, like this? Never mind. How's that look? We control the vertical. The vertical. Vertical. Yep. That looks vertical to you? Well... Give me that. It's like this. This way. Oh, That's vertical. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Vertical. Okay, yeah. We can blur the picture. I got the blur button on here. Or sharpen it to crystal clarity. What do you mean, crystal? In focus. Okay, what button is it? That one there. This one right here? No, not that one. Ooh, I have a cheeseburger. What do you have? <laughs> Onion burger. Sorry. Yeah, just let me run it now, okay? okay. Keep your hands off it. Right. <clears throat> we are back in control. So for the next 60 minutes... 58 minutes, actually. Will you shut up? Okay. Sit back and contemplate the awe and mystery that reaches from the inner mind to... Almost Live! Versus the Media <laughs> with Tracy Conway, Bob Nelson, Bill Nye, Bill Stanton, Steve Wilson, and Ed Wyatt, and starring John Keister. And tonight, in a desperate programming decision, Almost Live comes to prime time with a special look at television, at the movies, and yes, even radio. It's Almost Live versus the media. And now, here's the referee. And welcome to Almost Live versus the media. And you know, for some reason, I think that we're all fascinated by the media. We all want to know a newscast, how it's put together. We want to know tomorrow's headline, what it's going to be. We want to know why does Cher have all those tattoos? We want to know all that stuff. But, but what's really surprising is that even though we're surrounded by the various media, television, radio, newspapers, magazines, we really, we really don't know very much about them. For example, how many people could explain how a cathode ray tube works? or Cindy Reinhardt's popularity. <laughs> Not very many. Not very many. Now, you see how little we know? In fact, we've prepared a little quiz so that you can test your media IQ. Now, see if you can answer these questions. Now, question number one. You are the president of a local TV station, and your news has taped an unfavorable story about a much-loved local sports team. <laughs> Should you A, run the story, B, stop the story, or C, stop the story until the unfavorable press gets to be too much, then go ahead and run the story, thus becoming the laughing stock of not only your local community, but the entire nation as well. OK, you get the idea. Very good. Follow along at home. Question number two. The best feature of the Sunday Seattle Times is A, Pacific Magazine, B, the Arts and Entertainment section, or C, it's flammable. <laughs> oh. Very good. Question number three, the most emotionally painful radio news report in history was the Hindenburg disaster, B, Orson Welles' War of the Worlds broadcast, or C, Gary Lockwood got another job. Ooh. Number four, the show Primetime Live would get better ratings if A, it had better promotion, B, it wasn't on opposite LA Law, or C, Sam Donaldson shaved his eyebrows. <laughs> okay, we know that one. Question five, the primary reason most people read the Seattle Weekly is A, the discerning film reviews, B, the scathing political essays, or C, the three pages of phone sex ads. <laughs> well, once again, you guys are way ahead of the game here. You know. Okay, question six. The movies of Jerry Lewis are so popular in France because A, he's a comic genius, B, they enjoy slapstick, or C, they've been on the sauce <laughs> since they were 10 years old. <laughs> Following along, number seven, Dan Rather has never matched Walter Cronkite's popularity because A, there's more competition now, B, he gets less promotion, or C, let's face it, the guy is a space cadet. <laughs> And finally, television's finest moment was A, live coverage of Neil Armstrong's first moonwalk, B, the final episode of MASH, or C, when that guy threw a chair at Geraldo. <laughs> People want to know about the media, but it goes further than that. People are constantly coming up to me and saying, John, could you give me a couple bucks for a drink? But then they say, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're skinny, bald, and not really all that talented. How did you get your high-paying job in the media? Well, 
I was lucky. I had some photos that a certain program director didn't really want publicized. <laughs> but for others, it's traditionally been a long, hard process. Until now, take a look. Are you unhappy in your current job? Do you have doubts about your future? Are you a loser? Then stop! You can become a winner with an exciting career in the powerful world of the media. You can influence world leaders, touch the heartstrings of America, or just talk and talk and talk about Madonna. And you can start right here, right now, at the Seattle School of Media. You want to be a highly paid TV news anchor? We'll show you how. Good evening. Good evening. Howdy. Steve, Mimi, me. good. Bob was trying again. Or if you don't want a desk job, how would you like to beat the streets as a super earnest TV news reporter? The town behind me is scared that a killer will... Okay, wait. The people in the town behind me tonight are afraid of a killer. <sighs> I'm not giving it. Okay, look, just remember that you're selling it to the viewers. Now remember to think visual, think melodramatic, think ratings, and use the big voice. Timid citizens of a once sleepy town tonight are cowering behind locked doors, gripped with fear. Fear that they will soon become the next victims of a crazed chainsaw killer. That's it. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Much better. Much better. At the Seattle School of Media, we offer courses in all media. If you're looking for a rewarding career in the glamorous world of newspapers, we'll show you the tools of the trade. For a reporter, a notebook, and a fifth of scotch. For an editor, a blue pencil, and a fifth of scotch. For a publisher, a fifth of scotch. But maybe you're not that ambitious. Maybe you're the type who would rather just sit back and let yourself go and take the easy way out. In that case, you want a job in radio. Our professional instructors will teach you the four basic radio styles. Obnoxious AM hyper. <laughs> Shit machine, we got Sting, Stone, Strange, Squad, Power, Bridge, Patty, Poison, Doors, Dead, Doobies, and m -m 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 Madonna! Late Night FM Mellow. Well, those are the good sounds of Kenny G as we continue with music till dawn high. How you doing? My name's Glenn. I'll be with you all morning long. Susie's my producer. Mm. Oh boy, that coffee's good. Thanks, Susie. About 22. Pass the hour right now. Don't go away. Talk radio host. Get on the phone. We want to hear from you. Hello, Ballard. You're on the air. Turn your radio down. Turn your radio down, man. Down. Later. Hello, Ballard. You're on the air. Turn your radio down, sir. Turn it down. Turn your radio down. Down. Turn the damn thing down. And wacky morning team. So, so he looks into the glove compartment, and what do you think is in there? What? A weenie. <laughs> So don't let life pass you by. Call the Seattle School of Media today and start on the road to a great tomorrow. Okay, stay with us. We'll be right back with a look at the world of television. Monday on A Woman's Place, we'll show you a fabulous new facelift you can do at home. All it takes is five minutes, two clothespins, and super glue. <laughs> Plus darling hand-knit sweaters for poodles. Oh, Monday on A Woman's Place. You know, probably the most predominant and influential of the media is television. 100 channels, each running 24 hours a day, each showing that same thigh master commercial with Suzanne Summers over and over again. Well, it's been called a vast wasteland, but that's not entirely Ken Schramm's fault. But it's true that television doesn't always live up to its full potential. But every now and then, television comes up with a show that is so compelling, so clever, and so insightful that it unites an entire generation. Like this show, for example. No. This isn't fair, Michael. You and Elliot, you have your careers. Now, I am stuck here every day with the kids. 
We're not an equal partnership, Michael. My needs aren't being met. I don't feel fulfilled. Michael, I need more. Well, how about some Jiffy Pop, huh? <laughs> Nerdy Something. Brought to you by Microsoft Shampoo. For that greasy, matted look that says, I've been up all night hacking. Dave's Radio Dispatched Eyeglass Repair. You break them, we'll tape them. And American Plastics. Makers of fine pocket protectors for 20 years. And now, back to Nerdy Something. <laughs> Got you, Frank. Mike, Mike, please let me direct this commercial. Come on, you know I can do it. You oh, know Elliot, I can do it. Elliot, 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 right Elliot. Elliot. Elliot, look, it's Gary's ghost. Wow. Hey, 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 Gary's ghost. Hey, you have something on your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Ellen. Elliot set me up with this guy, and I'm, I'm afraid he's going to be a real nerd. I'm going to go on a blind day with him. I, I, I'm worried. Oh, oh, God. Here he is, here he is. I'll talk to you later, okay? I'm Alyssa. Hi. I'm Roger. Oh, thank God you're normal. <laughs> what is he doing my Kevin Cotter invitation? Here's John Wayne. Well, sir, how's it go, Pilgrim? <laughs> Come on, I'll do some more in the car. Stedman, Weston, I spoke with a client today. I believe we have a problem. <laughs> Unfortunately, shows like that get canceled every year despite their popularity. The reason? Well, they're just too expensive to produce. For example, a single episode of L.A. Law can cost up to $700,000, and most of that is for the special effects required to make Susan Day appear smart. But recently, <laughs> we've seen the development of inexpensive reality-based shows, shows that use real people and real events, shows like this. Due to the graphic nature of the following program, there may be certain scenes that are not suitable for some members of our viewing audience. Like wussies and little wimps and weenies. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad Cops boys, bad boys. What in Canada. Yeah, Monday is always a little bit tense around Kent because, you know, tonight is uh, women's mud wrestling night. And everybody's a little anxious for work to end. Sometimes a little too anxious, if you know what I mean. Car 25, we got a possible 124 at Claudia and James. Uh, yeah, this is car 25. Roger, be there in a second. <coughs> yeah, we got some big problems here. Excuse me, gentlemen, excuse me. Huh? Where are your caps? What do you mean? Do you realize that as long as you are in the city limits of Kent, all males under 35 years of age must be wearing caps? We forgot them at home. You forgot them at home. All right, well, look, I've got some standby caps. I want you to put these on. Until you can get down to the minute mark, you can get a, you know, damn I'm good, a honk if you're horny, or just even a caterpillar hat, and anything like that. But you must be wearing a cap as long as you're... Hey, 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 come here, buddy. What the... What's the matter with you? Look, I don't write these laws. I've got to enforce them. I, okay. I got beer, and generic was okay, right? Oh, great. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. good. What, what do we have here? Excuse me, young lady, do you know where you are? Kent. <laughs> That's right, and you realize you're in violation of the Kent Big Hair Ordinance? <laughs> Look, all women in Kent have to have their hair teased out at least 20 inches. <laughs> oh, honey, you're way under. You're way under. <laughs> Uh, look, I'm going to let you go this time, but you've got to get this tease down, okay? Now make it big, okay? All right. I'm going to give you guys a warning this time. Get your cap on. Get it on. I'm going to give you a warning this time, but I want you to stay out of trouble. If you can't stay out of trouble, you stay out of Kent, all right? Am I clear? Yes. Yes, sir. All right. In Kent with no caps. <laughs> 
evil and kid, you know, they're, they're, they are basically good people. But, hey, whoa, what's that over there? What do we got here? What do we have here? Hey, hey, oh, oh, down, 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 come on, come here. All right, now listen, I want to see your driver's licenses, and I want to see both of your Boeing IDs. <laughs> oh, we don't have Boeing IDs. We, we, don't, we don't work at Boeing. We work downtown. Yeah. Well, I guess that's pretty obvious, isn't it? You're North Enders, aren't you? You are. Yeah, yeah. So you okay. walk right past the caveman kitchen. Now, everybody knows that the only reason that North Enders come to Kent is to go to the caveman kitchen. You didn't stop there. You're acting very suspicious. I want to know what's going on, and I want to know now. Okay, we came down to laugh at Hicks. To laugh at Hicks. Very nice, gentlemen. That's very nice. All right, I'm afraid at this time I'm going to have to escort you back to I-5. Okay. Actually, thank you, officer. It's pretty scary around here. Yeah. Can, can I have a latte, please? No, get out of here. <laughs> oh, oh, there's the Kent City Hall. Boy, that's a beautiful building. And I get chills every time I look at it. You know, Kent is a beautiful city. Of course, maybe it might just seem that way, being stuck between Renton and Auburn, as it is. I think it's beautiful. Car 25, a domestic of the semi-scenic apartments? Uh, Roger, Roger, I'll be right there. What's going on here? I didn't do anything, man! Change the channel off Matlock. What? Hold it, that's a very serious crime in Kent. You never change the channel off of Matlock. Why would you do something like well, that? I wanted to watch the Bill Moyer special on Channel 9. Come on, man, he was great in Stripes. No, 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 you're thinking of Bill Murray. It was Bill Murray in Stripes. Bill Moyers is the guy who talks to intelligent people about meaningful subjects on Channel 9. Honey, well, change it back to Matlock. No, no, it's too late for that. Get out. Come here. I'm going to read you your rights. Now, listen to me very carefully. You've got the right to remain silent. Although you can talk about the 64 funny cars that are going to be at SIR this weekend, okay? All right. Uh, if you need a lawyer, well, we'll go up to Bellevue and get you one. All right? You understand that? Now just stay right here. i got to check something. Okay. Let's go. Cops. Okay, all right. So, if you find yourself in Kent, you want to be careful. Also, you might want to look into some therapy. Now, when we come back, we'll explore the wonder and mystery that is public television. <laughs> brings back memories. Oh, these are great. What does this remind you of? Mmm, tastes like vanilla. Uh-huh. Senior trip? Paris. That cafe! Yes! <laughs> old friends and old times are special. Let Global Java take you back again. Mmm, I love this coffee. I loved that waiter. John Talk about great French kissing. Ooh la la. You kissed him? But you knew I was dating him. We never went out. We just had sex. Share a cup of global java. You slut! He was my boyfriend. Look, you cow. He made his choice. Treasure the special memories of your life. And I believe I'll have a touch of kidney pie. What's the matter? Oh, I'm bloody choking. He's turning blue. Call the plumber. Uh, oh, uh, that, of course, was Upstairs, Way Upstairs, one of the many fine programs you'll find here on public TV. Now, this is programming you can't get on real TV stations, 
All they have to offer are shows like L.A. Law, Northern Exposure, and The Simpsons. Now, we, on the other hand, pride ourselves on broadcasting programs that are so unpopular that we have to beg for money, which is why we hold these pledge breaks roughly every three days. But it's worth it, isn't it? I mean, imagine what a living hell your life would be without artsy culture programs like Blue Collar Ballet. <laughs> Okay, uh, well, during that clip, we received a pledge from a, a Mr. Smullian, who apparently is a local businessman. Mr. Smullian uh, pledged $5 if the community will chip in $100 million. And that's, that's a fun way to pledge with a challenge of some sort. And now, uh, let's, let's uh, go to Sally at our tote board. Uh, how, are we, how are we doing, Sally? We're doing great, Alan. That last contribution brought us up to... $143,207. Wow, that's just great. And we really... Oh. Oh, oh, really? Well, uh, apparently that total included quite a few donations from our friends in Canada. And when you allow for the exchange, the actual total is $734. <laughs> okay, well, maybe this is a good time to explain a few things to our friends in Canada. First of all, we appreciate your contributions very much. We really do. But, you know, your money is just, I mean, you call it a dollar, but it's really not. I mean, like, what are we supposed to do with it? So, <laughs> come on, friends in Canada, dig in. Show us that you care. Do it for the kids. If you're a mother like me, I know you want your children to continue to be able to see quality programs like Drawing with Chet. Hey kids, how you doing? Today I'm gonna want to teach you how to draw, and I think we'll start with a dog. So you get kind of a circular thing there for the body. You got a tail, uh, some legs, three or four is fine. Uh, head, you know, you have, maybe have a foaming mouth here. Dangerous dog. Uh, so then maybe we'll add a guy here with a gun who will uh, shoot the dangerous dog. Okay, it, it's not a gun, it's uh, a leash, kids. Uh, he's taking a dangerous dog for a walk, okay? There's your dog. See you, kids. You know, a lot of people ask me, why do you work in public TV where the pay is lower and you have to humiliate yourself by begging on television so that even when you're just walking down the street, people say, hey, there's that guy who begs on TV. Well, I'll tell you why I do it. It's because I'm dedicated to quality TV, Plus the fact that Ken Schramm just refuses to leave town meeting and give the rest of us a shot at making a real living. But be that as it may, where else but on public TV can you see such stimulating discussion programs as Roundtable Forum, Report Counterpoint, Counterpoint Roundtable, and of course, Forum Report. Now, I know that King TV has the Compton Report, which is close, but it's not the same. They get paid. And I know Compton makes a bundle. I know he does because I know someone who used to work there. So if you're sending money to King, stop it. King is channel 5. We're channel 9. You see, you need both hands to count to our number. <laughs> All right, enough said. Now, if you subscribe to public TV, you'll not only get quality programming, but we'll give you stuff. For example, if you send $20, we'll send you a copy of Robert Bly's new book, Men in Conversation with Other Men, about going into the woods and beating drums and other man things. <laughs> Okay, for $50, you'll get the book and this commemorative t-shirt that says, Public TV begs for it. <laughs> and for a pledge of just $100, you'll receive all that, plus this scenic video, Over Fight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at that. <laughs> that make a lovely gift? So please, subscribe today. Anyway, I'm getting word that we're just about ready to start our feature, Civil War II, the rematch. But our phone lines are going to remain open. As a matter of fact, how are they doing, Bill? Uh, the phone, phone's oh, doing good? They're, they're doing great, John. Oh, they're, that, they're that's fine. good. Really as a matter of fact, well. uh, let's patch this one in live. Let, oh, let's John, hear it. Let's uh, hear it. No. You sound so manly. <laughs> On second thought, let's just let's go to our feature now. Okay, here we go. Civil War. No, what the fuck are you doing? Are you doing?
woman's place, we'll talk to the author of the bestseller, Men, God's Cruel Joke. We'll take a look at the comeback of girdles. Ooh. Oh. And we'll discuss a controversial movement to castrate doctors who dump the wife that put them through medical school. All that and new spring colors and nail polish. Ooh. That's Tuesday on A Woman's Place. I think we all enjoy going to the movies every now and then. Movies give us a chance to escape, to unwind, to pay $17 for a Snickers bar. You know, when I was younger, I used to like going to horror films like Nightmare on Elm Street, The Shining, Ernest Goes to Camp. But you know, after a while, though, you see so many horror films that they stop scaring you. And that's why I was excited to see a preview for a new movie that promises to be the scariest of them all. Check it out. She thought she was going on a dream date. Yes, I'm excited. You know, he says in his ad that he's a professional man, and so, I don't know, I'm hoping maybe he's a lawyer or, or a doctor or something. But soon, she'll live through every woman's nightmare. Oh my God, that's, he's here. I'll call you later, okay? All right, I will. Bye. <laughs> With an engineer. <laughs> experience horror beyond belief at an engineer's party. guys, <laughs> <laughs> this is Tracy. Oh, great, you made it. Hey, we're just about done. Ready, guys? Okay, go. Cool. <laughs> oh, oh, no way! Whoa! God, is a popcorn ready? Almost. And then we're going to play Star Trek. Look, he's Spock. Oh, cool! Oh, hey, wow. hey, she can play Nurse Chapel. Yeah! Come on, beam up. It'll be fun. <laughs> hey, guys. Yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah. Bye. God, this guy's cracked Bye. me up. I love working at Boeing. <laughs> You'll writhe in agony as you witness an engineer at dinner. So uh, I've worked our date out on, on my computer. I've got it on floppy, and if it goes well, I think I can transfer over to the hard disk. Here's your bill. Oh, thanks, thanks. Oh, you know, uh, whenever I tip, I like to use a little formula. It's kind of, it's kind of neat. Let me show you how it goes. You take the quality of the service. You'll you feel heart-stopping amazement when an engineer tries to score. Hey, it was really interesting. Can I come in? I brought some of these. They're latex. <laughs> oh, we can test them. I always carry a tester on my belt. Make sure they're okay. Yeah, we're in business. We're in business. This one's fine. This one's fine. How many do you think we're gonna need? Date with an engineer. Oh, in a power. Ooh. Ooh, pretty scary, huh? Well, that might be a good one to rent sometime, but you know, have you ever noticed how seeing movies at home just isn't the same as seeing them in the theater? For example, there's usually not as much gum all over the floor, unless you've got kids like me. But still, it's never been quite the same. But it can be. Here's how. Hey, what are you doing? Renting movies is convenient, but it's just not like going to the theater. Until now, new Movie Mates brings the theater experience to your home. Start with The Gabby Couple. I don't see what the big deal is about this woman. She is not that attractive, and you don't think so, do you? Um, no. I'm not. I mean, I could see where, you know, some people would think she's really beautiful. Oh. I mean, she is really beautiful, but... Oh, They're think? just like the couple that always sits behind you. I like really beautiful women. Oh, really? I mean, I mean, really, I like, I mean... Here's the cruncher. Chews on Cheetos for two solid hours. <laughs> now, add the explainers. Blonde, straight blonde hair. Remember? In the car chase scene? No, no, not in the car chase scene. In the scene where they're in the grocery store. What store? The store that was on the beach. Remember, they walked right... Oh, 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 Every okay. theater has a snorting giggler. <laughs> <laughs> and no movie is complete without the phlegm guy right beside you. <laughs> 
can enjoy a true theater experience with Movie Mates. Order now and you'll get Borderline Psychotic absolutely free. <laughs> Let him have it, man. <laughs> Kick his butt. <laughs> what? Hey, man, I paid my money to come in here. Don't you shush me. Just watch the movie and shut up. Don't kick your butt. And the theater hall with Movie Mates. time on choice hops or pure water. All we care about is brewing a malt liquor that'll really mess you up. Reach for a good buzz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we discourage the use of alcohol among minors. Unless the peer pressure gets to be too much, because that can be just as bad as a little brew now and then. The word buzz in good buzz malt liquor is not a reference to getting drunk. It's actually derived from an ancient Greek word meaning, oh, I thought you were bringing in the sheep. We just like the sound of it. The makers of Good Buzz did not solicit or pay for Ted Kennedy's endorsement of our beer in his Playboy interview. The rumor that Good Buzz malt liquor actually killed a man in Texas has never been verified. The makers of Good Buzz Malt Liquor remind you to please drink responsibly. Well, you know, TV news has changed a lot over the years. Gone are the days of long documentaries, boring political analysis, and as of last Friday, Aaron Brown's constant smirk. No, <laughs> no. Today's modern newscast is fast-paced to keep up with the viewers' shorter attention spans, and if this trend continues, we should soon be seeing shows like this one. It's time for Frenetic Pace, the show for people who don't have time to wait. Here's your host, Whip Winger. Hi, folks. We've got a great show for you. We'll try to finish our discussion of satanic imagery and first-grade finger painting. We'll talk to a man who claims he's seen Elvis, and as always, we'll take your phone calls. First, a news break. Tension in the Middle East, unrest in Central America, violence in South Africa, demonstrations in the Soviet Union, and lots of stupid people in Idaho. Jim, how's the weather? Pretty good. Whip? Thanks, Jim. <laughs> okay, let's take a phone call. Hello, you're on frenetic pace. Yes. Whip? Yes, go ahead. Oh, uh, yes. Is it? I'm sorry, you've got to get to the point on this show. Line two. Go ahead. Hi, Whip. Do you think we should take military action in the Middle East? Who do you think will win the Super Bowl? Should the Keating Five be prosecuted? And who's the hottest babe on network television? No, the 49ers, yes, Nicolette Sheridan. Carol? Thanks, Whip. Today's special meal is a lean cuisine stuffed cabbage. Now, this normally takes three minutes in the microwave, but because we're short on time, I've pre-cooked it. Doesn't that look great? If you want this recipe, here's our address. Thanks, Carol. We'll be right back after this environmental second. To conserve water, never bathe. <laughs> this is Bob Jackson, who claims to have seen Elvis Presley in a mall. Is that true? Yeah, I saw him. Thanks, Bob. And now we go to the network with a very important message from the President of the United States. I, I think it was after the, uh, the, uh... Well, that's all the time we've got. Tomorrow we'll try to get to that satanic finger painting story. See ya! <laughs> you see... Now, you see, it's... It is not easy to be a news reporter. You know, hair care alone can cost you a bundle. And, uh, well, and today, news reporters, like a lot of other people, are having to face the cold reality of a recession. In fact, as stations cut back, 
we're seeing more and more sad stories like this one. Let me just conclude by saying that we feel this change is a positive one, both for the company and for the community. Sir, can you comment on the allegation that this well, is sir, about sir, the sir, sir, Thank you. Thank you all very much. Uh, Packard reporters, uh, I have an announcement to make. I'll try to make it brief. Uh, we have had to make some financial adjustments, some cutbacks, or restructuring. And we find we no longer need a pack of reporters. Uh, sir, 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 sir. Swanigan. Are you saying that we're we're fired? That would be the word I would use, yes, fired. Fired. Uh, fired. Like you yes. You're fired, get it? F-I-R-E-D. Fired. Beat it. Go on. Another job. Another job. Another job. Another job. And that's the only statement I'm going to make at this time. Thank you. What? Are there any jobs? Are there any jobs? Guys, settle down. Look, I'm, I'm sorry we don't need a pack of reporters. Uh, maybe you can help with the pledge phones. <laughs> no, 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 pledge phones. No, 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 you're never going to be television reporters again. It's not going to happen. But what you do have is your pride. Hmm? Now, why don't you get up, find another job, and be proud of it? What do you say, huh? Let's be proud. Let's go. Come on. Would you like one of those world famous milkshakes we have? Okay, when we come back, we'll take a look at the world of radio and the print media. Don't go away. Wednesday on a woman's place. You made the perfect gourmet meal. The champagne was superb, and you danced together on the terrace in the moonlight. You knew then, tonight's the night. The sex was good, but 15 seconds later, he was out the door. If that sounds like your guy, we'll show you how easy bear traps are to set and how reasonably they're priced. That plus the prize-winning recipe for Desert Storm shortcake. Mm, that's Wednesday on a woman's place. Well, you know, in the days before television, radio was king. And some radio stations had their own symphony orchestras. Uh, one station even had a vast collection of the classic hits from the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s, <laughs> and the 90s. But only the soft stuff, like the Doobie Brothers, Fleetwood Mac, and the Eagles. But, but radio stations have gotten smaller now. And as they've gotten smaller, a lot of radio DJs have had to supplement their incomes with second jobs, like this guy. Music Power! He's America's most exciting, most dynamic, 
part-time disc jockey. Otherwise, Randy Scott is DJ Dentist. Hi there, I'm Crystal Brooke, your dental assistant. But right now it's 3 o'clock and it's time for the number one dentist in the city, Randy Scott. Hello. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? What's your name? Timmy. Okay, Jimmy, before we get started, let's check in with Crystal. Well, Randy, things look really wide open on the Upper East Side, but ooh, down south, we've got a nasty saliva buildup on the bridges. Boy, it looks slick down there. It is nasty, so everybody be patient. Well, no, he be patient, I be doctor. Randy Scott, that is. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Hi right there, it's about 3.07, about 72 degrees outside. Right now, I'm the Dr. Randy Scott dental thing, and it's x-ray time. Let's line it up there now, and the radiation, by the way will cause little if any permanent damage okay smile for me and don't move here we go <laughs> <laughs> okay, now hold still dr scott <laughs> smile <laughs> according to this x-ray you don't have any teeth what do you think <laughs> Okay, let's get on with the doctor. Randy Scott. <laughs> it's about 16 minutes free. Time for the gas. Let's start breathing. Are you wondering what kind of gas that is? Yeah, what kind of gas is it? It's helium. <laughs> He's Dr. Randy Scott, a dentist with a really good sense of humor. <laughs> Fifteen minutes past the hour right now, about 98.6 in there right now, and a Dr. Randy Scott dental appointment, and we're going to put a crown in, a crown that is going to be... Solid gold! Okay, but less talk, more music power. Let's get started. Okay, maybe you want something a little more soothing? Okay, we're going to slow things down a little bit right now. This is the Blue Danube Waltz. turn from the big mass mediums of television and radio and take a look at magazines. You know, magazines are aimed at very specific audience today. And, you know, I find some of those groups a little troubling. Now, let me, let me show you. And I just, before we start, these are all real magazines purchased in Seattle this week. For example, Women and Guns. <laughs> now, guys, this is not the magazine you want to see on the coffee table on that first day, <laughs> is it? <laughs> Although it does have some interesting articles in here. There's a reader's poll. He's late again. Blow him away? Yes or no? Also, how to avoid the itchy trigger finger during PMS. All right, very good. Another one here we have, budget flying. <laughs> you know, you'd think that flying might be that one activity where you wouldn't want to really cut corners to save a couple of bucks. Although, they've got some interesting articles like avoiding airport fees by landing in parking lots. And I think these people also publish thrifty parachuting. But, you know, if you want to live the budget life in real style, pick up Trailer life. <laughs> you know, if you subscribe now, you can enter their contest to win a vinyl couch. <laughs> There's a real good article this month, How to Choose a Yappy Little Dog. Okay. <laughs> wow. Also, that, that isn't a new magazine. It used to be called Kent Life. Okay, here's a nice one. Crappy magazine. <laughs> I believe this used to be called Sucks Monthly. Uh, <laughs> Title article this week, Those Amazing Mariners, and <laughs> The LaToya Jackson Story. Very interesting. Also, Garbage Magazine. Now, I just want a word to the wise here. You be real careful where you pick up, uh, when you open up the fragrance advertisements in this. <laughs> just, just, just another thing. OK, another one that we found, Turkey Hunting Magazine. <laughs> You know, many women feel that women with guns and turkey hunting are pretty much the same thing. 
One of my favorites here, the one that I buy every month, Serial Killers and Murderers magazine. Yes, it's true. I usually only buy this one when they're out of beautiful homes and gardens, but uh, <laughs> this has got a great personal ad section in back. A lot of great guys out there looking for pen pals. <laughs> Just send them your address, they'll do the rest. Also found this one this week, Ma Magazine. <laughs> hey, Ma! For guys who like to yell at their mothers, and also, for real excitement, check this out. Chess Life. <laughs> what kind of man, what kind of man reads Chess Life? Well, I think this says it all. <laughs> and we'll be right back.